Hello everyone. I hope you're all well. It's Saturday afternoon here and we've I've just finished teaching an online workshop. We had a lovely morning. And we were I've, I've been teaching uh, this canvas here. And when I was teaching the canvas, I thought there's quite a few people that have bought this stamp set and maybe want a nice simple way to create a card. So this is a workshop we were we were creating this morning and it's still available if you want to do that workshop. You just need to email me at tracy at craft addicts.co.uk. But we created this this morning and it got me thinking that during the class I was actually showing uh, one of my pages. I'd actually coloured these with HB pencils, not this one. But the grey ones, I've actually coloured them with HP pencils. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to create something simple and use some of my characters? So I've got my little mouse one here. I'm going to use the mouse one, but you could use the dog if you wanted to. We've got my happy dog, which also looks lovely, shaded. So I like him as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something very simple. I'm not going to create anything complicated and use as little product as possible. So I do apologise for my desk because we've literally finished the workshop and I've got everything on my work on my desk that was from the workshop and I've left it like that and I've not bought in any new products. So I'm going to use what I've got available. So what I've got here is I've got a white piece of smooth card, smooth white card, four and a half inches by six and a half inches. And the only reason I've got that size card is because that was on my desk. So you can use any size card that you wish. This is four and a half by six and a half. And I've always got these die cut circle apertures. So what you could do is you could draw around a lid and then just pierce the center and then cut it out so that you've got your own aperture. So you don't have to have a die. You can draw around a lid. And I thought, what I want to do is create something simple. Something that's not over complicated. And maybe a project where you're trying to get going. And you've got no idea what to do. So I thought this is a good way just to do a fun project. So I've got Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide Ink. And again, we use this in my workshop. Um, so I thought I'm going to use it. We're going to use very little colour and maybe quite monochromatic. Um, so I'm just going to add simple layers. So what I've got is I've got this... Oops. I've got my Distress Oxide Ink. Now, the Distress Oxide Ink is a pigment dye fusion. So the colours layer beautifully. If you've only got Distress Inks, Distress Inks are absolutely fine. The only thing you need to be aware of when using Distress Inks is if you're layering colours, then you need to be aware of what colours can create mud. A little bit less so when you're using oxides because of that opaque element. So it means that the colours layer beautifully. So what I've got is I've got a spare piece of cut and dry foam. And as you can see, I used this this morning. It very, I'm very stingy with my cut and dry foam, I have to say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up my cut and dry foam. If you haven't got cut and dry foam, just use an ink blending tool. But what you need to be aware of is when you're applying ink for shading, you really do need to take a few minutes just to apply that ink properly to your blending tool. You can't just swipe it and think that you've got enough ink on there for blending because you haven't. You need to give it a really good layer of ink. So spend it a couple of seconds just making sure that you've got that ink layered onto your cut and dry foam. And what I'm going to do is, am I going to add it there? Yes, we are. I'm not even thinking about it too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm starting off the edge of my aperture. I'm not going straight in. I'm, I'm starting here and I'm starting to blend here and then I'm going to go into my card. So I'm just blending that hickory, I forgot my, yeah, hickory smoke. You know when you sometimes say a colour and you think, oh, that doesn't sound right. Yeah, it is, hickory smoke. 
So I'm just going to apply. I'm not applying any more ink because the further out I go, what I'm going to do, let me just, let me just explain something. What I find is, because that piece of cut and dry foam, as you can see, is a lot smaller, I find it easier to handle if my cut and dry foam is a little bit wider. It's just me. I just find it easier to handle if the cut and dry foam is a little bit wider. And I also feel like I get a better blend if the cut and dry foam is a little, a little wider and a little thicker in piece. Yes, that's much better. I can, I can hold it better if that makes sense. So that one is narrower and it's a little bit harder to handle. So being a bit stingy there. So what I've done is I've just cut a thicker piece. I prefer a thicker piece. And if we lift that up, you can see I've got one circle. And what I'm going to do is add part of a circle here, like so. Just picking up that ink. You can... Place your stencil, you can hold it down with a piece of low tack tape if you wish. So again, I'm just blending that colour over my circle. But I'm not using the whole circle because sometimes it looks better if it's a little bit more random rather than the whole circle every time. I can just remove my fingers and just add a little bit more ink. It's very important that you add enough layer of ink to your cut and dry foam. If you don't add enough layers of ink to the cut and dry foam, what happens is it starts to drag. And once it starts to drag, it means that you can't blend properly. So it's not nice when it starts to drag because then you get frustrated with the blend. So as you can see, we've got two lovely blended circles there. And what I'm going to do is add another one here. So just picking up plenty of that ink onto my cut and dry foam. Let me just see where that's going to, yeah, I think that's okay. So we're just going to blend, whoops, just move that. Just hold, that's because I didn't hold my card in place. There we go. So just hold that in place. This is why it's a good idea to just hold it down with low tack tape because then you haven't got to do what I do and hold it in place with your hands. So if you've got dexterity problems, then just hold that down with a piece of low tack tape. Sometimes I try to wing it without the low tack tape. So it's entirely up to you whether you do that or not. And the minute you can feel your cut and dry foam dragging, then add a little bit more ink. Don't get frustrated with it and continue to try and blend when you haven't got enough ink on your ink blending tool because that's not going to do nothing. All it does is drags. And there you can see you've got three lovely circles. Just works so well, doesn't it? I just love that. Really love that. So what we can do now is just clean our area, even using the wipe from my workshop. So at the moment we've got two two, two, three beautifully blended circles. And what I'm going to do is I can't make my mind up whether to use my mouse or my dog. So I think I'm going to use the dog, which is called Happy Dog, because he is a happy dog. I know he looks a bit grumpy, but he isn't. He's happy, really. So I'm going to use my Happy Dog. So just add that to my acrylic block. Let's just get some white card. There's always a random piece of white card. Now, if you wanted to, let me just bring this in. If you wanted to, you could bring that in and you could just stamp your dog on here. See, I'm trying to decide whether to stamp my dog and then... See, trying to give you lots of ideas, but I think I'd like my dog. Yeah, so... If you wanted, you could stamp your dog on there. Then you could use a water brush and remove the colour. And then you've got a bleached out dog. But I'm not going to do that at the moment. So I'm going to stamp my dog. I'll show you what I mean. 
So I'm going to stamp my dog with the Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. And just as always, apply a good layer of ink to your stamp set. So just take your time to add that ink. Like so. And I'm just going to leave that ink upside down because it's a well used ink pad. If I leave it upside down, it just means the ink flows to the top of the ink pad and I'll get more use out of it, especially while I'm just doing the stamping. I always do that anyway, if I'm just stamping or whatever. So, so just allow that to sit there. Just give it time to sit. And I just love, just look at that. Don't you think he's lovely? I know, I, I, it's small things make me happy small things i think sometimes it's the simplest things that make us happy so what i'm going to do now again thinking about not using too many products i'm going to use a hb pencil don't even know what hb this is 2h yep so it's just a normal pencil and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to shade my little dog so i'm just using a light motion just to add a little bit of that color so i'm not sort of pressing too hard i'm using a very light touch obviously here where his little scarf is there'll be a little bit more shading so i will add a little bit more depth to that later so I'm just going around and just adding the shading. So no fancy pencils, no nothing like that, just a HB pencil. So nothing too fancy is being used, just a HB pencil. So I'm just going to add, and what I can do is I can use a flicking motion if I want, just on the scarf, just to make it a little bit easier for me. And again, even when I'm colouring with coloured pencils, I still do this. It allows me to just place down, if I was using pigment, it allows me to lay it down a little bit simpler by just using a flicking motion. So I'm just adding that flicking motion. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little bit of a white area here in the centre. Just in this area here. Just going to leave a little bit of a white area just so that it gives me a little bit of light. So it looks a little bit more shaded. So I can show you this. So just taking my time just to add and when I want to add a little bit more depth with the HB pencil I'm just pressing on a little bit harder than when I first started so I start with a light a light touch and then if I want to add a little bit more I just press a little bit harder where I want the little bit of shading so just around the edges here i'm just adding a little bit more a little bit more depth let me show you what the scarf looks like just when you add just when you leave that little bit of white it adds a little bit of shading so that's lovely what i want to do now is i just want to add a little bit of shading just around his neck here because where his scarf is that'll be where there's a little bit of shading so I'm using a very light touch just to add a little bit of shading here because that's where there'll be a little bit of shading. So I'm going to add a little bit of shading just here and just around this little nose there. So then what I can do then is carry on colouring the rest of his body. So I can just add a very light flicking motion to add some colour 
to my little dog. So I'm just taking my time just to add some shading. So I'm just using that very light flicking motion just to lay down a light layer of that colour. Not too much. And it's a very light touch. I'm not I'm not sort of laying down too much. Just taking my time just to lay down some of that pencil. I don't want to forget his little arms. And I'm leaving the scarf white just to give it a pop of white. And I think what I'm trying to show is that you don't have to have expensive products to do a nice project really I suppose is what I'm trying to say you know whatever stamps you've got you can do exactly the same so just adding a bit of shading just around the tail here and just in here where there'd be a little bit more. And then what I'm going to do is I'll add a little bit more shading because around this scarf, there would be a little bit more shading because it's where the scarf is lying. So I'm just laying down a little bit more of that HB pencil. So just layering it down like so. So just take your time, oops, so just layering that, just so that it's got that little bit of shading just around the scarf, it just makes it stand out a little bit more. And I do like taking my time to do this because I, I find it fun, I do enjoy it, a little bit of shading there. And this is a nice, simple project if you just want to tackle something simple that's not too overly complicated. It's a nice project to do. And if you're sitting in front of the tally, then it's, it's wonderful. So what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of shading to, to the umbrella, to the umbrella, not umbrella, umbrella. I always get hiccups if I talk too much, you know. I think it's trying to tell me something. So I'm just adding a little bit of shading just with this HB pencil. And then I'm going to add some from the bottom. Now my son's getting his hair off with his game and I can hear him in the other room. Just adding a little bit of shading, like so. So I'm just sort of using a flicking motion just to add that bit of shading. And let me show you the umbrella. By leaving the little bit of white space there, it just gives me a bit of light and shade, which is what I like. You can see the little bit of shading down here. So I love that. I just love. So just add a little bit to his ears. Like so. And you can leave a white area if you wish. If you don't want to leave the white area, don't stress too much because... You can put it in with the gel pen. Sometimes the touches of white just... What I like about a HB pencil is you can keep adding layers, layer and layer. And it's great if you can just spend a little bit of time layering that colour, that pencil. But I find this is one of them things that it's great if you're watching the telly or if somebody's... You know, if you like my husband and you've got the football on, then it's great for me because I can come and do this. 
while he's watching the football and I'm just not interested in the slightest. So I'm just adding a little bit of shading under there. Don't let's forget that little bit of an umbrella. Yes, I'm going to leave the scarf white, definitely. Like so. Just see where I want a little bit more shade. Just a little bit around the eyes. You really can lose yourself in doing this. Just adding a little bit more shade around the eyes. But look, look at him. Don't you think he looks fab just shaded with a grey pencil? And then you can smooth it all out a little bit. Just smoothing that out a little bit. Just look at him. I just think he's lovely. Just think he's so lovely. Just for a little stamp, I think he's fab. And what I tend to do is I would spend, oh, I could spend ages just adding layer upon layer of shading. I could just lose myself in just adding the layers. And there's a little bit of shading just round his arm there, just because. But you can see that you can spend ages just adding little touches of shading. So you could spend ages doing that. I won't spend too much longer because I know you'll probably be falling asleep. So I'm just going to cut my dog out. And on for this cutting out, I'm going to leave a little white border just on this occasion. You don't have to leave the white border if you don't wish. No problem at all. So just go around. I'm always amazed how quickly the time goes when you when you're creating projects. Even if I'm doing a little bit of colouring. Just think he's so lovely. So just cut that out. Whoops. So just leaving that white border just around my little dog. Obviously you can pause me while you do your cutting out or fast forward me, whichever you want to do. And just, there's his little eyebrow. I love cutting out, I do. I find that therapeutic as well. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I do, I do find it therapeutic. Just. And sometimes if you find cutting out a little bit difficult, I find it a little bit easier by actually creating a little white border. I find the cutting out a lot easier. I do apologise if you can hear my son shouting in the background because he's getting his hair off with his game and he's in the next room to me. So I do apologise for that. So just cut that out like so. Going round, and I tend to turn the card rather than my scissors. I find it easier to actually turn the card. It's just easier for me. We all have different ways of cutting out and whatever works for you. Now I'm bending his umbrella, which is not a good sign. Let's just move that out the way so we can see what we're doing. Just 
just give that a little white border there we go and then there's one little bit that's going to annoy me so we've got our little dog and i'm going to have to cut out this piece here so i pierce a hole into my design and then i'm going to cut around around my little dog so you don't have to do this if you don't want it's not a problem it's not not detrimental it's just that i like to cut that out there we go so that i've got that open area oh doesn't he look fab i just think he looks lovely now what we can do is we can add him there if we wish so he would go there and we can add a little bit more detail to our background so what i'm going to do is come on tracy is before we don't want to place our dog down at the moment so what i want to do is grab my original piece let's just move this out of the way grab my original piece like so okay and then what i'm going to do is place this stencil down like this and then i'm going to take my hickory smoke just pick up some more ink and we should be able to get tone on tone let's hope that it shows up i'm hoping we get that tone on tone Let me just lift this up oh yes so what i'm hoping is that i'm adding layers tone on tone so just holding that stencil in place and then if we just remove that you can see that you've got that tone on tone stenciling just adds another detail to our background so we're going for pretty much monochromatic let's just move that here so just add our stencil again over the top hold it all in place a little bit more ink and then just again adding layers i don't know why my son plays these games you know because he spends half his time getting his hair off with them so just add the layers of ink now somebody's banging the door just as i'm doing a video so there we go we've got lovely tone on tone effect so just then place this back over here and let's have some smaller details on this one so we're just placing some smaller details on this And before you move your stencil, you can just lift it up just to make sure that you're getting that detail or whether you actually need more ink. There we go. So what we've got now is we've got some beautiful layer on layer, which is what I like. So let's just move this here. Place this over the top again. So you're using your stencil. And then what I'm going to do is grab my stamp that I put on one side. I'm going to stamp my heart grunge. Just adore this stamp set. I just think it's a beautiful stamp set. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the little stamp here, which is here in the corner. So it's on its own as a little stamp. So I'm going to add a little bit of stamping here. Just bear with me a second. Can you stop opening the door, you do? Sorry about that. It's just that my husband is going in and out of the front door. So he's banging the door. So I do apologise for that. Right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of stamping. I'm hoping that when all you professionals do videos... That, you know you don't have so many interruptions as i do 
I have millions of interruptions. So I'm now going a step too far because I've just had another thought. We've got a grey morning mist versifying Claire and I've just had another thought. So we've got this big stamp set here that's on the heart grunge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink that up with the grey. So what we're going to get is we're going to get a tone on tone effect with the grey. And the morning mist is a lovely colour, but all you'll see is tone on tone. So I'm just inking that stamp up. I have used morning mist. I'm getting paranoid now that I've used black. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to straighten my card and just decide what area I want to use in there. So I'm not using an acrylic block just to make sure I can get edge to edge stamping because I've got that lip on the card. I need to make sure that I can get the edge to edge stamping. If I used an acrylic block, it doesn't allow me to get that edge to edge stamping. So I'm just making sure that I get exactly what I want. And I can lift this just like I do the stencil and just lift that. And you can see if I remove, let me lift this up for you. Let's get rid of that bit of fibre there, that's it. You can see I've got beautiful stamping inside, still using tone on tone. Just remove that. And you can still see the stenciling underneath, which is what I adore. So this time, let's use a little bit different area of the stamp. Let's use the lower area, make sure we're using morning mist. So just... It's hilarious, you know, in our house. I've noticed everybody else does videos. But mind you, they might edit it out. I don't edit anything out. I keep it so it's real. <laughs> so you hear every noise, every everything. So what you need to remember is, if you've got some of the cards showing, you need to cover that bit of the card up, okay? Then you can add your stamping. To the area but you just need to cover that top area up just if you've got some of the white cards showing just so that you don't stamp in areas that you don't want again without the acrylic block because it just makes the stamping easier beautiful just beautiful oops just lost my dog just love that absolutely love it so now a little bit of stamping here just on there make sure that we've got that right use the background stamp once again with the morning mist just inking it all up I'm just going to cover that part of the card up just so that we don't make any mess and just stamp again I can lift that stamp up just to see where I've stamped you can just lift it up and just see there we go. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And all I'm doing is using one colour. So just wipe up your mess where you've got some of that stamping. Just make sure your fingers are nice and clean. Just let me show, whoops, let me show you that. Oh, I just love it. Look at that. Just think that is beautiful. Just in monochromatic. What I can do now is add some layered stamping so i've got this little stamp that i started with initially where i was racing ahead and now i'm going to use the black nocturne ink 
and this is only a little stamp so I don't have to mask anything off and I can just add a little bit of the stamping in the background you see the layer upon layer upon layer just wonderful the grey then the black and this little stamp is just a godsend just for adding little details absolutely love it I will lift this up so that you can see. I'll just move that out of the way. Just give my hands a little... Well, that's useless. That, that baby wipe's hardly wet. Just give my hands a little bit of a wipe before I pick the card up. Look at that. So you've got this layered stamp in here, layered stamp in here, and layered stamp in here got the stenciling in the background the grey and the black absolutely love it so this is my little dog who's going to sit here like so oh bless just so cute so cute so what I'm just you see now because obviously when you're doing a video you haven't got the ability to just keep hunting for things so what I might do is I've got my mouse st stamp which is quirky friends and there's a tiny little flower in here and I'm just going to use and I mean it's a tiny little flower but I sometimes love the tiny little details what I'm going to do is take that let's just move this card out of the way oh little dog's still sitting on there let's just find you there like so I've not stuck my dog down yet because I don't want to. Another piece of card. Like so. So just grab this and this is my black nocturne ink. Tiniest little flower ever. Because the mouse, you can the mouse can hold this flower, you see. So little tiny flower. Just stamp that. There we go. There's our little flower. And what I'm going to do is just grab a couple of pencil crayons and I'm just going to add a little touch of red to this flower just to give a little pop of red. Just because I think a little pop of red because the dog's going on a walk and he's going to meet his lady friend and it's raining so he's going to see her on a walk and he's going to give her a little flower i know i know there's just no hope for me is there really so just don't worry everybody worries about me in this household they do think i've lost the plot i mean they're probably right anyway but hey ho so just add that little touch of red and then I'm going to cut this little flower out and all I do is I leave a little white border when I'm cutting something small out and it just makes it a little bit easier for me to cut out that's all so if you're ever struggling with it with a little a little piece that you really want to add just add a little white border just to make it a little bit easier for you to cut out but it's such a little flower, you could even draw the stem in. It's only a straight line, nothing complicated. So just adding my stem. There we go. Now I can't grab this little flower, of course I can't. Right. So what we're going to do is grab my adhesive. And we're just going to add... A little my little doggy let me just wipe my glue I've been using it this morning so it's in a terrible mess because my glue does get abused a little bit so just adding a little dog 
just place him there. Now I don't want to press him down just at the moment, just at the moment. And then I'm going to make sure he's holding his little flower. So just tuck that in. He's holding his little flower. So grab my scrap paper. And then what I can do is I can press that down. There we go. So I can press that down, give it a good firm press. Just so that you've got no glue anywhere. Look at him, he's got his flower. He's taking it on his walk for his lady friend. So. What I've got is a little piece of lolly stick. Let me go in, now I'm going to cut the lolly stick, which means it's going to go flying everywhere. So what you do is you hold your lolly stick right into the scissors. You need a really good pair of scissors to do this. Please watch your eyes. And then what we're going to do is just put the lid on my adhesive. Then we're going to just colour our little stick just with the grey ink. Whoops. Let's colour that with the ink. Just so it's in grey. Like so. Now it's just deciding which words can go on there. You won't get all the happy when the dog's too big. What about friendship? Friendship we may get on there. Let's try it. It's only a lollipop stick at the end of the day. We can easily cut another piece. It's not exactly detrimental. So we're using Nocturne Black Ink. And we've got Friendship from the Mouse Stamp Set, which is Quirky Friends. And anybody who's friends with me knows that I'm a quirky friend. So just adding that friendship onto there. And if I just hold that up, you can see friendship. Because he's going to see his little friend. I think there, yeah, I quite like that. So just remove that. So what you could do, if you want, you can have him standing on the word friendship let me look at that in the camera so you can have him standing on that or you can have the word friendship here in the white space move that so it's entirely up to you where you have that you could have it here as well it works quite nicely there because you've got your cluster here or it works quite nicely there because what you've got then is you've got three four five it's an odd number so you get a nice balance so it's entirely up to you where you add your cluster. I quite like it there, just because it's a neat cluster. But I also like it here as well, because of the white space is more open. So I think I'm going to add it there. So we're going to add that friendship there. Like so. So just play around with your placement. And where you're going to place everything just take your time just to add that placement i just think it's worthwhile taking your time and you don't want to get rid of too much of that white space because i think if you get rid of too much of that white space it look too dark so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add a little bit of shading around my circle like so. So add it around there. And what you could do is you could mark where your lollipop stick is and add the shading first if you wished and then place your lollipop stick down. It's entirely up to you how you do it. So I'm just adding that little bit of shading there. You could add a little bit of shading by just adding water 
to your water brush and because you've used that oxide ink it would shade out a little bit anyway but I want to use this ink tense pencil just because it's a little bit darker so give me a little bit of a darker shade so just now add a little bit of shading you see the ink tense pencil is a little bit darker so just spritz that water because my water brush doesn't work too brilliantly there we go just a little bit round here like so just adding a little bit of shading just around my circles just take your time just to add that just adds a little bit of detail I was going to say there's one circle I haven't done couldn't work out which one I hadn't done then until I looked I thought oh yes you can tell a mile off just add that shading around there we go so just so you can see it adds much needed shading just like so so what I can do now is just add a little bit of shading around my lollipop stick as I say you could have added this you could have marked where your lollipop stick is going and added the shading first if you wanted but it, this is just the habit I've got into I like to add the shading afterwards there's some bits on there so just add a little bit of shading just around the lollipop stick just so that that combines with everything else that we've done so it doesn't look disjointed you don't want it to look disjointed you want it to look like it all belongs so there we go and we need to add some more details So I just want to ground that dog a little bit, just so he's not floating in midair. So I've got my white paint. You could just draw the line, line in if you wanted with a Posca pen. I'm just using white paint. And I'm just going to add some scratchy lines. I'm going to add some scratchy lines to my project because it gives it vibrancy. Just lifts everything. And you don't need much, you don't need much paint at all, but it does add a little bit of vibrancy, which is wonderful, which is what you want to the card. And then I'm going to add some white splatters. Again, just to add to that vibrancy. There we go. Wipe up again. Now, if you wanted, you could add some splatters of yes spit it out Tracy you could add some splatters of red paint if you wanted to so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that to my black mat it always looks better finished once you've added a black matte or whatever matte you use it always looks a lot better just looks more finished so just add that to there then we're going to add that let's get some a piece of copy of paper I just like to work in a clean space if i'm adding it to a card blank so adding that to a card blank just make sure you don't put your hand in the paint. Just add that to a white card. Again, I just take a few minutes just to make sure that everything is okay. Of course, we want to do an insert as well. So we've got to do an insert. 
I'll just leave that on one side. And then I always think I've got more pieces of card, but because I was working with card that was on my desk, I didn't have a piece cut. So we're just cutting a piece of card, four and a half inches by six and a half inches. So four and a half by six and a half. Just so that this can fit on the inside. Now, the dog is visiting his friend, the mouse. So we need to put the mouse on the inside of the card because he's visiting the mouse and he's, he's visiting his little female mouse and he's taking her a flower. So this is going to be on the inside of the card. Now, if you wanted no line colouring, you could just stamp in grey ink and you could have no line colouring. So it's entirely up to you what you do. So just adding that mouse. To the inside. And this is from the Quirky Friends stamp set. Taking that friendship sentiment again, just so that it echoes what's on the front, on the inside of the card, using my Nocturne Black ink again, just adding that friendship here. So that we've got that. And then what we're going to do is going to add a little bit of shading just so that the poor little thing doesn't look like he's standing in midair and then what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little <coughs> excuse me a little bit of shading to our mouse just with a HB pencil so just, I'm just using a circular motion just to add a little bit of shading to my little mouse because you want the front to coordinate with the inside. You, you want it to look like you've put some thought into there. So I think it's just nice if we do that. And just... Add a little bit of shading round there, like so. So just take your time adding that shading. And it's going to be all in grey, so we don't need to do pink ears this time. Sometimes I do pink ears. So just colouring my little mouse in it. He does come to life once you colour him in. He really does. And just take your time and add that shading. And you can take a lot longer to colour your mouse than I'm taking. And trust me, it's worth taking the time. It really is worth it because they really do come to life. Just add this little bit of a shading to his little, little arms. Don't forget his tail. And when you add a touch of shading, that always brings it to life. So I want to add a little bit of shading under his eye, like so. Of course, we want to add a little bit of shading just to the inside of his eye just so he looks a little bit more lifelike so I'm just going to add a little bit of shading underneath his eye like so there we go just add that underneath there just a little bit of shading here because this is where his little ears meet 
Let's color the ear in. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shade in there and just here. Obviously, you're going to take a lot more time than me when you're colouring these and when you're shading your, your little mouse blessing. He deserves the time just to be shaded properly. So I'm just going to add a little bit more shading here. And I don't mind not rushing. I like taking my time. Just to, to give the detail. Let me show you how he's coming along. Just so you can see. Even his little eyes look like they're more lifelike now. So I just think it really is worth it. Just add a little bit of shading around his nose. His little mouth there. A little bit of shade in here, in this little corner here. So you take as long as you want to add that shading. Just around his belly as well. A little bit of shading around there. Oh, bless him. He's just coming to life now. Just add a little bit of shade in there. A little bit of shade into his tail. Where it meets his little bottom. So, as I say, you spend a lot more time just colouring than I'm doing. I just think it's important that you spend that time. Let me show you how he's coming to life. Oh, bless him. So what you can do then is you can use your gel pen, just add a little dot here and here, little dot on there. Sometimes the white doesn't show up. If it doesn't show up, just use some paint and use paint instead. So if your gel pen doesn't, if your gel pen doesn't work, use a little bit of paint and that will work just as well. So just add some touches of white and what you can do then is just add a few little splatters just so it coordinates, not too many, just so it coordinates with the front of your card. And then I just want to check something. Let's just move this out of the way. Move that out of the way. I'm terrible. Let me just check my drawer for something. Look what I've got here. Some of us bought these little melting wax melts. And I've just got some wax melts here. I've even got another little spoon, like a little wooden one. It doesn't take much to make me happy. So I've got my little spoon. I've got my little tea light holders that are wrapped so well that you can't actually get in the bag. It makes a nice rattling noise though, doesn't it? Which is great on, on, the, on the video. And I've got some of these coloured wax melts. I think I've got enough. Let's just chuck those on the floor. Move my card. And I've got these wax melts. Let's use that clean spoon because... And what I'm going to do, hopefully we've got, look, we've got some red. Look, we've got some red. I think we'll only need two because we're only going to use the little part. But we'll soon know, won't we? Let's see if we can do that. So I've got some red wax melt. I find this so much more controlled. I don't feel like I'm... I'm in danger or I'm causing a fire hazard. So just having a little tea light holder. So I've got my little tea light here. And then I'm just going to put that over the top there. 
and I'm just going to add my little spit it out Tracy wax melts and I've got this little heart here on the friends the quirky friends stamp set little heart and then what I'm going to do is just add that heart to my acrylic block and what we're going to do is just let that those wax melts melt because they should be red but just so that you can see there's our little mouse it's friendship there's the front of our our card so what we can do now is just move this on one side and let's add this to the inside of our card just so that we've then got that sorted as well so just add this to the inside of the card always be aware that you've got that tea light lit so i'm just adding this to the inside of my card like so so just be aware that you, you've always got that tea light lit so just add that to the inside of the card move that on one side use your non-stick craft sheet oops move everything out the way take your melt pour it onto your non-stick craft sheet and then we're just going to stamp the heart into there and just allow that to sit while it cools down just allow it to sit blow your tea light out and just allow this max what max welt wa <laughs> wax melt to cool down max welt do you like that couldn't get my words out max welt <laughs> oh i'm dangerous and there we've got a little heart in our wax melts just allow that to there you go just what i want i was just going to cut it out but i've pressed hard enough into the wax just to cut my heart out let's hope i can lift it up now oh, of course you can it just peels tracy i've done it so thin you're supposed to use three wax melts the thing is you're supposed to use three I've just used two for mine because I only wanted a little heart. So can you see I've got that little heart with the wax melts. You can remelt your wax melts so don't waste them. Any little bits that you've got left over you can remelt. But if you're doing this put three wax melts in because then it won't be quite as, as thin as mine. And then I'm going where's my adhesive? So yes, yeah, so you use three little wax melts because then it won't be quite as thin as mine. I do love it though. Just add my heart there because this is a friendship, don't forget. So you can send this to a friend who needs it. And what you've got is you've got your card with all that detail in the background. And then, let's hope this doesn't fall off now, I've got the insert with the little mouse. So it works beautifully. Now I hope you enjoyed that simple card. Simple techniques, but you get a lovely result. So I hope you enjoyed that. I really fancied just coming along and creating something simple with the products that were on my desk. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'd love to hear your feedback. I'll just hold that up so you can see the shading on my little dog. And I wish you all a happy weekend and I shall see you all soon. Bye for now.